This is my first time ever playing in Europe. I was super excited because Palestine asked me to go last year, but I was so burned out and I was just so tired, so I had to decline. So I was like praying they would ask me again, and they did, and I was like, yes, we get to go. So I was just so excited. When men see a trailer in gear, they see it as a challenge. When the bus ride gets really long, um, Addie and I go insane. It's time to throw out the burner luggage! Like, we lose our minds, and we end up just being loopy and crazy. We make sure the men don't kill each other in the process. They sometimes get territorial. <laughs> like today we spent maybe half an hour just naming Pokemon and just being dumb. <laughs> and it's just, it's those little moments that I love when you're traveling with your friends. Like it's just those stupid moments. Okay, we're off to Glasgow. I'm in my bunk and it's fucking cold. It's freezing. It's freezing. <laughs> Some of the differences between touring experiences in North America as opposed to Europe and UK. Just, I heard so many things about how much the venues are elevated and well taken care of. I want to say, it's the first night I had my own dressing room and I feel so seen. She's a rock star. I'm a rock star. You're famous. I'm famous. Wow. Well, the staff actually, you know, respecting the venue, respecting the artists, taking care of the artists. But I, I didn't realize it till I actually got here. And just the first show in Vienna, how they actually fed us. I'm actually so shook. Oh my God, are you kidding me? And they, they provided us like meats and cheese and bagels and bread and just chocolate, like all the food you could possibly imagine when more often than not in the States, like you're lucky to get a pack of water. The fans in Europe have been so passionate. I think that's a good word to describe them. Because it's my first time here, there's just been this extra excitement, extra emotion that I've seen, at least from the stage to the fans in the crowd. Baby, can't you see? There's just been such a great reception. Like they're singing the songs, they're like chanting, they're clapping, they're putting their hands up. We've crowd surfed a bunch. Paris was insane because we got like three walls of death. They were washing constantly. But it was nice to see them just like throw themselves at each other. I love that.
one of the German shows, maybe Hamburg, um, I met a fan who, so long ago, she knitted my dog custom sweaters. And um, since then, my dog's passed away, which is like, I could cry about that right now. But I met her at the show and I didn't know she was going to be there. And I was like, this is so cool. I was, we were both just crying. Like, it was so incredible. Yeah, we'll vibe it. Okay. No, we're good. Yeah, okay, I will vibe it. It'll be fun. Okay. Cool. And then I'll the yeah, we're ready. And then I'll okay. Nice. Uh, did you guys want to go over my hero? Uh, we have no more shoe glue, so I will be selling the boots. I don't want to, but. It just has to be done. So today's the the day that they die. Hello. No. I broke it. That promise is good. I think when fans share their stories about how like our music has affected them, or like saved them, or got them out of like a really dark place, that just always resonates with me because I don't think people realize that like we as musicians like. Our work also saves us and like the messages people send to us like that affects us too. More I'm more than people know, I think. Every night I do my little speech before I sing lovely. So I try and balance my connection with the crowd versus me crying because if I actually take my in-ears out, I will start crying. A time in my career when I, I was gonna quit that altogether. And I was like, I'm done, I feel burnt out, and I just am done. later um it defied all like algorithm um and it just blew up it started i i was refreshing my youtube and i just saw it go up by a million a million a million and i was like something's happening it just gave me that massive like boost of hope i guess yeah it felt good I heard the crowd singing, and that gets me. Like, I just start to choke up. It's always lovely, and it's just a special moment for me every night.
swear to God, if one more motherfucker opens this door, go ahead. <laughs> you know, like a lot of industry people say like, oh, if you do covers, it's not real. It doesn't translate to the real world, but it's bullshit. This to me solidifies, like this is my fourth tour doing this. And it's like, this absolutely solidifies that that's wrong. Like it does translate to the real world. Ask me anything to am I right? Ladies and gentlemen, raise your hand if you want to talk to Laura Babbitt or Addie Nicole. Why do you keep calling me that? I'm going to be building my own show. And um, I have lots of originals with all three projects. So, Lauren Babick, I, that's weird saying my own name. Um, <laughs> and we've sold out multiple venues in multiple countries now, and it's, it's just like, we can do this. I just want to thank everyone who has come out to a show. It always is still surprising to know that people still care. So I just have to thank everyone for their continued support. And I will be back to Europe very soon, hopefully sooner rather than later.